I'm going to end with the Manny story, and then we're going to go eat. Ah, we're going to get out of class early a little bit tonight. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to roll up, didn't I? Yeah. You know, I told you a little bit about Manny. Uh, I literally have uh, hundreds and hundreds of cousins. Uh, second cousins and third cousins and whatever that is. Second cousins removed and I mean all that stuff. Uh, I wouldn't know them if I met them, most of them, but lots and lots of cousins in my family. And uh, I don't think any of them went to college except for Manny. You know, Manny graduated from high school and I can still remember he's a few years older than I am. And Manny uh, was graduating and we got invited to go to the graduation. Well, understand that my mom didn't graduate my raggedy dad didn't graduate, my grandparents didn't graduate, nobody graduated from high school, I'm talking about. Most of them didn't even go. But, man, he graduated. I get to go to the service of the ceremony. I never knew what that little bunny hat and that little castle thing. I mean, I still remember that. You know, that was a big deal for me because I'd never seen that. Nobody ever talked about it. I didn't have pictures of my mama walking across the stage getting her diploma. I didn't have any of that stuff. But, man, I watched him walk across that stage and get that diploma at W.W. Samuel High School. Man, I'm pretty pumped up. But you know what? Four years later, we get another invitation, my mom and I, to go watch him graduate at the University of Texas. College. I didn't even know what college was. Literally, nobody in my family that I was around had ever gone to college. But Mandy goes to college and graduates. I get to go to that ceremony, too. Another funny hat, another little tassel. I was pumped up. I, knew, I at least knew kind of what college was, Jeff, at that point in time. I didn't know. And then I'd ride around with Manny sometimes, and I'd go over to his house, and Manny would be talking about business deals. Manny would get on the phone and be talking about buying this, buying that, doing this, doing that, stuff that you didn't have those conversations in my house. Nobody's buying real estate or stocks, you know? Manny's talking about that. Man, I was all ears. I was listening. I was like a sponge listening to Manny. Holidays, I'd go over to Manny's house as much as I could because we live literally in the ghetto, you know, House that's falling down. Manny lived in a beautiful brick home that new cars and <coughs> holidays when I love to go to Manny's house. It's Christmas. I can remember this like it was yesterday. I go to Manny's house and we're having fun and there's food and gifts and decorated and I'm just loving life right there. But I always knew when they started putting the PJs on it was time for me to leave, you know. Pajamas come out, time for me to go. So I hug everybody's neck and say goodbye. I'm walking down to Manny's house and set up camp on a hill and I'm walking down the sidewalk to my now, I was just talking about Manny's beautiful home and his new BMWs in the driveway, right? For you young folks, you won't know what this is, but it, it was a 1962 Ford Galaxy. Some of you more mature people will know what that is. It was a boat, and it was an ugly boat at that, okay? And my boat had like 250,000 gazillion miles, and I thought I would decorate mine up a little bit, though. It had a bunch of cracks in the dash, so I got me some shag carpet and cut it out, and I glued it to my dash so that those cracks didn't show anymore. And all it had was an old raggedy radio, so I wanted, you know, I wanted some, some jams in my car. So back in those days, they didn't have CDs, and they didn't have Bluetooth. They had these big old brick things. Pastor, you remember this one. Big old brick things called eight tracks. <laughs> they were about as big as a brick almost, I mean, and you didn't slide them into a little crack in your dash there. I mounted the sucker under my seat. The quality was terrible. You'd get your big old brick out, and I'd lean over and I'd shove it into this big old hole. And it would start playing. Back then, my favorite group was Creedence, Clearwater Revival. Creedence, yeah. man, I love Creedence. So I'd be driving down the road, I'd have the 440 air conditioner going. Y'all know what that is? Four windows down to 40 miles an hour. I'd have that 440 air conditioner going. I would have greens blind, and I'd have that dash. Just give me this. That shag park would just be blowing in the wind. That really has nothing to do with the story, but I just want to tell you about my car. I'm not embellishing on that car either, guys. That was my car. Down to the shag carpet and the eight track. Okay, now I walk out of Manny's house and I get in that car that I just described. And I don't know why, I've been to Manny, Manny's house a bunch of times in my life, but I remember I'm squeezing that steering wheel. I mean, I've got the white knuckles and my mind is racing because I'm fixing to go back to 87, 24 Dunlap Drive where people are getting raped and murdered. That's where I'm fixing to go from this big, beautiful home in the nice neighborhood to mine's. And I remember sitting there hanging onto that steering wheel. And I remember it just hitting me. I remember turning around and going, I want to be like Manny. 
Man, he's the one I want to be like. I'm standing in front of you guys here in Mount Laurel because of a man named Manny Carter who was a cousin that didn't even know I was watching. He knows now because I've told him that I am who I am in large part because of him. And you say, Nick, story, why are you telling us? Okay, here's why. You got a lot of people watching you. Yeah. Oh. You got kids watching you. You got grandkids watching you. But you could be like me. You may have cousins watching you. You may have friends watching you. You may have friends' kids watching you. You don't know what, what's going on. Right. Man, you didn't even know I was watching you. I promise you, though, your kids and grandkids are looking at you. And I'm going to ask you this. What legacy are you leaving? Are you leaving them a legacy of I can make a bunch of excuses? Or are you leaving them a legacy that they realize somebody with your last name can do something special with their life? Are you showing them what they can accomplish with their life? See, most times investments are way too much. We can't get in them. I mean, there's ways to make money, but you got to have a lot of money, all that stuff. 200 bucks, guys. 200 bucks. We can do this. We can get people in to do this. Guys, but it's going to take us getting our butt out there. Let's start showing our kids and grandkids and everybody else that's watching us that we do have greatness inside us, and we're going to leave a legacy that we're proud of. I will say it one more time. Everybody in here listening to me, you got greatness inside you. We've got that promotion going on. We've got this company going through the roof. We've got a lot of good stuff happening. It's going to happen with or without you. I challenge you to make sure it's happening with you. And I challenge you to get your butt out there the next few days while this promotion's happening and make you a bunch of $400 and watch how that catapults your business down the road. I believe with all my heart there'll be two groups of us in this room. There's going to be the group that's glad they did, and there's going to be the group that wishes they had. God bless. We're done.